Let's bring in Lincoln Hill. He's the Director of Policy and External Affairs at the Nuclear Industry Association in the UK. Thanks for joining us, Lincoln. Tell us what's the, at the heart of this deal, what you expect this deal to lead to when it comes to nuclear energy in the UK. Well, what the deal is about is working together to deploy advanced nuclear, really to re-industrialise Britain. You look at two of the core deals in it. You have an American advanced reactor developer signing a deal with one of our big utilities to deploy advanced reactors in an area that was a big industrial cluster. They had a lot of steel making, chemicals, uh, industries which suffered from higher electricity prices. And they said, what do we need to do? We need to get advanced nuclear so they have the clean, reliable 24-7 energy, cut those energy prices, bring back the jobs to these areas. And that's really the key of the, the nuclear offer is to bring back the jobs along with the energy to the places that really need them. I mean, you look at another deal that was signed, a utility, American Advanced developer to build a power station at the site of an old coal-fired station and get a data center in there, power the data center. So advanced nuclear connecting uh, the economy of tomorrow, getting us those growth opportunities while reviving some of the areas that have been left behind by the economic changes of the last 30 and 40 years. And so that's really the unique selling point of nuclear here and why we've gone with this deal. Yeah, and of course, in the UK, you're going big on uh, wind in particular when it comes to renewables, not so much solar. Uh, you got out of coal a long time ago for different reasons, really. You got a lot of ac access to gas, but the key is getting to net zero. It's just impossible for any developed country to get anywhere near net zero without large quantities of nuclear energy. How does it stack up when it comes to costs? Well, our, our challenge is to bring down costs. But the key is here that we know how to do it. What we've got to do is we've got to keep building. You know, we stopped for 25 years. A lot of countries did. You've got to keep building, keep your expertise fresh, keep your workforce active. And then there are other things you can learn proven all over the world for the model of how you do nuclear cheaper. You get your design simple, operable, buildable. You set that design before you build. You empower your project leadership. You make sure you plan well so that everybody's incentives are to deliver. But these are things which aren't actually unique to nuclear. They're common to all civil infrastructure projects. And what I say to people out there who are skeptical about it is, look, we've proven this before. You know, we've proven this before all over the world, all over the developed economies. We can do nuclear cheaper. We need to get back to the formula. And that's actually easier to improve project delivery than it is to change the physics. You try to defy the physics, you'll be on to a loser. You'll end up building competing parallel redundant systems. It'll cost you much more. And it's not something that humans control. Guess what? Humans control how well we deliver nuclear projects. And if we learn the lessons that we already did 40 years ago, we'll be on to a winner. Yeah, it just makes so much sense. If you, ha if you had a, a design that's tried and tested, then the regulators know what they're approving. Everybody knows what they're going to get and you're going to get it at a better cost as well. So all power to your arm in, in, in that regard because it does make sense. Now, even in the UK, of course, the latest big... Um, uh, big nuclear project that's that's been delayed and had cost overruns, the Hinkley C reactor, I think it's called. Um, this is the classic case that people will point to, where you have a massive reactor, uh, it's taken far longer than was expected and the cost has, uh, has doubled, I think, or, or, or certainly huge overruns. Is the answer the modular nuclear reactors, the small modular reactors that could be essentially made on a, on a factory assembly line and plugged into smaller sites all around the world. How close are we to having them rolling off the assembly line at, uh, at Rolls-Royce, for instance? Well, I, I hope we're close, but I think you will need a mix of both large and small-scale nuclear. And Hinkley Point C has taken a lot of stick, but you know what those guys took on the chin is reviving a completely dormant nuclear new build industry in the UK, you know, 25 years we hadn't built. So we didn't have the workforce yet. We didn't have the supply chain. And those guys, to their credit, had to take on the task of reviving all of that, which further large scale projects, further modular, small modular reactor projects will all benefit from. And to the point you mentioned a little bit earlier about regulation, again, they had to wade through a design that was in progress in, in France and Finland. Here we made a bunch of changes to it that really added to the cost, didn't make any difference to safety. France and Finland know what they're doing on nuclear as a safe design, but we made changes that ended up adding billions, I don't really think for much value. Uh, but small modular reactors have great promise uh, to be part of the mix. I think because they can be deployed in more locations, you know, smaller sites, they can be uh, located close to industry, as you're seeing with this 
deal with the Americans, you know, help with the industrial carbon decarbonization, but also the industrial revival. So we keep some of these heavy industries that have been shedding so many jobs. And what you're seeing now is this big wave of interest in the UK, in the US, from some of your big tech companies, some of your big industrial players, that they can privately finance the projects because they're a bit smaller, easier a bit to, to bite off and chew them, so to speak. And all over the world, there's a huge opportunity to deploy these if we get that standardization and if we get right. the developed economies who, who share this goal of uh, energy abundance, uh, lower energy bills and industrial revival to work together to roll it out. Fantastic stuff, Lincoln. Thanks for joining us.